Houston, the supercharged 3885 injected Fiero has a problem. Guys, the other day I took the supercharged 3800 Fiero out to an event and it was just fine, but on the way home I hammered it and something was clearly wrong. I was way down on horsepower. So I hammered it again and this time I looked at the boost gauge and it was way down around 4 pounds per square inch. Normally it's right around 13 psi. So I thought, well, hey, maybe the line that feeds the boost gauge came off. So I opened up the hood and I checked that line. Everything was fine. So then I thought to myself, did something go wrong inside the supercharger? I mean, after all, I just went through it totally, took it apart about a month or two ago. But then obviously it's such a, the Eaton Root style blower it's so mechanical that if something was wrong, it would be a catastrophic failure and it would make a ton of noise. So I knew that wasn't it. It could be the coupler, which connects kind of the pulley drive to the blower itself, but then I'd be getting zero boost. Then my mind wandered, did that little boost bypass valve itself come loose and fall off? That would kind of suck. But I thought, you know, that would probably make some noise. I can't remember if it's big enough to make its way down to the intake valve or not, but that would be kind of a nasty failure. So at this point, I was pretty certain that my problem had something to do with the boost bypass valve not functioning properly. Boost bypassing or dumping happens when this little butterfly valve that's inside the supercharger is opened to allow boost from the bottom of the supercharger, which is the pressure side, to bypass from going to the engine and instead it goes right back up into the intake side of the supercharger kind of like through this back door passageway but this only happens under certain circumstances. The butterfly valve itself is moved by a diaphragm that resides within this little canister. The diaphragm has a rod that comes out of it and it can either open the butterfly valve by pulling up on the rod or it can close the valve by returning the rod to its normal extended position. There are two ports on the black canister that contains the diaphragm. The one up high is the vacuum circuit and the one down low is the pressure circuit. Each circuit operates under very different circumstances to move the diaphragm. Condition one occurs when boost is not needed, such as when the vehicle is idling or when it's in very part throttle operation. There's a lot of engine vacuum, and that vacuum comes from the top to the top part of the canister, which pulls the diaphragm up and dumps boost. I tested the vacuum side on the car just to make sure it was working properly by performing the following actions. First, I grabbed the actuating rod and diaphragm assembly and I moved it through its entire range of motion to make sure it moved smoothly and wasn't sticking. Next, I had an assistant start the engine and almost immediately as the engine produces vacuum, you can see the diaphragm and the rod assembly pull up and open up the bypass valve. Lastly, I snapped the throttle back and forth a few times, and as the engine vacuum varies, I can see the diaphragm and rod assembly move in and out as they should. So, due to all three of these tests, I concluded the vacuum side is working just fine. Condition two occurs when boost is not wanted, such as you're cruising along at full throttle, and you're still accelerating, and you're getting close to the maximum speed limiter programmed into the computer. At this point, the car's computer sends an electronic signal to the boost bypass solenoid, which is really just a switch that opens up, and that allows pressure, instead of vacuum, to go from the supercharger, through the hose, through the solenoid, into the lower port on the canister, effectively pushing up on the diaphragm, which pulls the rod along with it, and bypasses the boost. Now on my Fiero, I've actually tuned out the top speed limiter of the computer. So realistically, I don't even need the bypass solenoid valve. So I'm simply gonna disconnect it by unplugging the rubber hose from the solenoid and plugging it. Now let's take the Fiero out for another test drive and see if we have found our lost boost.
Hey guys, well, I would say we absolutely recovered our loss boost. I'm just tickled that it wasn't anything major. I learned a little bit today, I hope you did as well. Hit that thumbs up below, be sure to subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.